Yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and uh, hopefully to give you a teaser of a very big uh, work we have performed during this year, started in January. And uh, the topic here is uh, survey of pump and pump unit vibrations. Uh, as you understand, I cannot cover everything in the report, but it will give you some insight on the main topics, so to speak. Um, and this work uh, has been performed on myself, together with my colleagues of mine, which are not uh, here today. It's uh, Penka Dinkova and uh, Christer Larsson. Uh, and uh, I will just start here with uh, just a little presentation, a picture of what we are doing at Efteklang. I come from, uh, from uh, AFRI, and Efteklang is a part of uh, AFRI, it's a sound and vibration department. And our uh, crash word, so to speak, is that uh, we tune the word. Uh, which means that, as you know, we who work with sound and vibration, vibration is a sign of that something is of a, some error, some faulty. And uh, that depends on that uh, we have not tuned the machine vibration with the, it's, uh, it's tuned to a resonance, for instance, that's a fault. Uh, but it can also be attuned to how the human uh, understands sound and vibration. If you are interested in finding out more information about us, you can go in here on our website here, uh, ftclan.org. Maybe I need to maybe say, say why we are .org. Uh, that's because when we took this brand name, there is a Danish uh, musician group called ftclan. So we didn't know that. So we cannot be dot s e dot p h. I personally have been working with uh, sound and vibration for almost 25 years, and uh, been dealing a lot in different industries. It can be paper mills, uh, energy plants, uh, product development, automotive industry, etc. So um, that's so fascinating with this area. When you deal with vibrations, uh, you can reuse all the technologies in the different areas. Uh, so this work, uh, why, why, why do we have this work? Uh, first of all, pumps uh, are very common component in the nuclear power plants uh, and it's uh, uh, a machine which needs to be there in order to for instance, pull the process and uh, it's, it's a critical component uh, and which also has a lot to do with uh, safety perspectives and it's, there are a lot of number of pumps that we go into that or deeply later on here. But then NFE boss they they announced this project that they would like to assemble all knowledge and experience in the area of pump and pump unit system. The pump unit system, that's a pump in a working system, which means a pump, foundation, uh, pipe system, etc. Uh, that can be different couplings in between them. Uh, different uh, drive systems. Uh, and uh, this knowledge and experience is then based on uh, uh, mainly on interviews with uh, the five nuclear power plants here in the Nordic countries. Uh, so we have three of them here in Sweden and uh, two in, uh, in uh, Finland. Uh, what also can be good to, to uh, keep, uh, to, to remind you, yourself of is that uh, all these, these uh, power plants are very old. Uh, as you know, they were designed and constructed 
constructed during the uh, uh, almost 50 years uh, ago, uh, which means that uh, there are a lot of knowledge uh, which has maybe disappeared or cannot be tracked. And uh, now it's just more a matter of uh, keep them running as good as possible. Uh, which sometimes when we have worked with this project, uh, when you come into new commissioning, etc., and things like that, how you design your, your pump, uh, we haven't that experience so much. We have it in Finland, of course, but uh, all experience from the Oikoluto uh, team is disregarded in this uh, report. So we have just based on the old uh, plots. Uh, also, we have uh, this is the joint, so it's just, it's not just the, uh, the power plants. It's also, I say, Ingemansson's own experience since 1950, because we have been involved uh, with uh, nuclear power plants uh, mainly in Sweden uh, since the start. So, so we have a lot of different uh, literature about and uh, report about things that we have performed. Mm -hmm. So that's the objective, to, and also to see if there is possible to uh, collect this information in a more structured way, uh, so we can like see it like a cookbook. That was the object. If you have a vibration problem, it's causing this and that. What shall you do? Is this possible? Uh, so, so that's also the uh, objective. Uh, so what we started with this project was that we we, uh, we wrote a questionnaire, which we uh, let all the plants uh, read in, in advance before we set up an interview. Uh, this is uh, included in the report. This is just a brief uh, overview of what the questions are, and the questions are kind of which kind of pump types uh, and how they are operated, uh, which uh, norms and guidelines are the plants using. Uh, then we would like to have more insight of what kind of uh, pump problems they have encountered during the years. So more like lessons learned uh, things. And uh, usually how uh, the plants, how they investigate and perform the analysis of these problems. Uh, and to end up, um, what kind of mitigation activities have been taken for these uh, problems. So we have had here a series of interviews during the, the spring here. Uh, and we have them as uh, digital meetings. Uh, what's important when you uh, read this uh, when you read this uh, report is uh, that it's uh, we have it kept it uh, anonymized, so you cannot uh, tell ah that's VDD or that's greenhouse. Uh, what uh, but we have been requested that to tell the reader that uh, if it, there is a, a problem example described which not belongs to the nuclear power plant, then that should be stated, but not by name. That can also be good to know. And uh, here is just uh, the report, a uh, short summary of a report layout, and a general introduction, and uh, it follows so to speak, what we have asked about the questions. Uh, chapter of what kind of standards, norms and guidelines. Description of different uh, pump problems. Uh, and then you are used to this uh, diam thinking. So you detect a problem, you analyze the problem, you mitigate the problem. Uh, and then uh, summing up, so to speak, what kind of main observations and findings uh, this work has uh, concluded into. Um, 
what's new in this project which i, which I also would like to tell you here that we have we have had uh, our own review of course at Eftiklang, but we have also done uh, twice uh, review on this report with a group so this this the pumps how vibration from the pumps is quite big uh, uh, issue so to speak a lot of different thinking and uh, a lot of different knowledge maybe which are missing uh, from my point of view uh, that maybe uh, the plants maybe are not aware of or they have uh, forgotten or etc so i think that's why it was very positive approach that we sit, sat uh, together and discussed ex exactly what what is written here. And uh, also, you 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 have five different points of view uh, to make comments. So it's kind of complicated to 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 structure this in in in, uh, in a clear uh, detail uh, report. Uh, so, from the rest now, uh, you are more than welcome, of course, to, to put up with uh, uh, questions about this. But uh, the main uh, presentation here will cover these point, uh, points here, uh, which will you give you a glance, so to speak, of uh, what you can find in this report. Uh, the, the report is not uh, yet approved, uh, but it's sent to Urban and uh, the uh, the reference group, uh, so we hope it will get approved and also distributed on the net as soon as possible. So we will talk about what kind of pumps we have investigated and uh, and uh, focused on, the kinds of uh, standards and norms, and also what kind of of pumps we have in more in detail gone through uh, with respect to vibration problems um, and then analysis mitigation and resultant observation yeah so uh, on a nuclear power plant as I told you from the start uh, we have a lot of different pumps uh, mainly in uh, of the pumps are, are located both in the reactor and uh, on the turbine side uh, but you have also a lot of different auxiliary uh, and safety uh, pumps. Uh, but there are three main uh, different pumps which we have have structured the report out of, and that's the vertical centrifugal pumps. It's the horizontal centrifugal pumps, and it's reciprocating pumps. Uh, as you know. You know a lot of pumps. Uh, this can go further down in the structure, but we have kept it as easy as possible. And the main focus is that uh, you need to know the physics behind what is causing the vibration from this three different. And uh, this was what we, we find that we can group them in a more easy way. Uh, on a nuclear power plant, we just took and uh, we had a question about how many pumps do you have uh, in the reactor and the, and the turbine side and the types of, of, of pumps. So here's just two different sites. I don't name them as because it's anonymous. Uh, vertical pumps. Uh, you see the ratio here, 36 and horizontal pumps, 585. Uh, on the other side here, it was a little bit more. 100 vertical, but still the majority is uh, mainly horizontal pumps. Uh, and uh, the, the pumps, they are, they are in a wide range of the different pumps uh, with, with respect to the power and mass flow uh, from just a few kilowatts to 11 megawatts. And the, the mass flow is from one kilo per second to 7,000 kilometers per second. So as you 
when you see just this table here and uh, you see the different kinds of example of different pumps, here is the reciprocating pump, piston pump, uh, centrifugal pump, multi-stage, to build up the pressure, uh, vertical pump. As you see, just by looking at them, they are completely different. And uh, and that's the key thing when you invest when you get a, a pump problem, you must understand the, the physics behind it to find uh, what can be the root cause of a problem. And this is what I will go into more detail. Uh, yeah, then that's why we want to have some, some guidelines and norms and standards to see uh, if they uh, fulfill these requirements or not. And it's very good to have requirements and standards and norms when you do commissioning for uh, new pumps. Uh, and uh, just shortly, to, we have a full chapter about all this, but just shortly. Uh, there are minor differences between uh, uh, the Finnish sites and the Swedish sites. They work with different technical documents, but to sum up everything, they work with the same standards and norms. So it's you have the shaft vibrations, the bearing vibrations for motors, uh, for centrifugal pumps. Uh, they're using the dot seven in ten eight one six or reciprocating pumps. It's number six. And how to set up uh, all the sensors, uh, etc. The methods of describing this uh, uh, dot one. Uh, but also, I want to highlight that it's extremely important their plant's own experience. So uh, if they have a pump which gives this vibration and will buy another pump, uh, they don't want to that that pump will be version. So they, they know what is possible and uh, it can be adjustments to these uh, pumps. Uh, and uh, in Sweden, here, if you see, it just look like two different different differences. Uh, in Sweden, they have uh, some technical documents uh, collected in something called PACT, and PACT consists of, of technical uh, descriptions (TBN), uh, and there uh, they refer to these kinds of standards. But also they had on uh, recommendations on to set up requirements for resonance, imbalances, straightness, fitting, etc. So they have like a, a package and uh, this TBM, uh, the Swedish plants organize themselves and get approved. Uh, is it by SSM or I'm wrong? <laughs> uh, maybe someone can put in there. Uh, uh, for uh, for the Finnish nuclear power plants, uh, they have their internal pump specifications, uh, which they get approved by the national Duke. Uh, we are not good on Finnish, so I cannot read everything <laughs> on Finnish, uh, but uh, that's the way we, we repeat it. That the Finnish and the Swedish work very uh, the same in the same manner with standards and, and norms. Then there are different authorities uh, which control them. Okay, and here come some uh, observations and findings to the, to the norms. I think this is not the first point here that. Uh, all plants think it's difficult to set requirements. Because if you go into new commissioning, uh, they should not be too tough. Because otherwise you can get more suppliers which, will, which wants to 
offer you something. But still, they need to be tough because you want to have a, uh, a long uh, running operation at the time for your pump, uh, pump system. So it's difficult, and you need also to keep logbook books about the history and see what's possible, and etc. So you can you can, so you can define for your supplier that this is possible to achieve. So learn by experience. Uh, there are, uh, according to our uh, uh, validation, so to speak, uh, that we didn't see any specific norm that we were using for for uh, specify base state and foundation regarding stiffnesses. It's more that the, when you buy a pump, uh, you get like a, a skid or uh, which often wise are filled with uh, concrete, and if uh, uh, and they promise you that this will be good, but there are no objective measures, so to speak, that can verify it. More than that, you can go by bearing vibrations. Uh, that's saying that the bearing vibration, according to ten eight one six, uh, should be could be this. Uh, but that's uh, that's complicated. So this is something which is uh, difficult for the sites. And uh, as you know, I can just say something about this: the foundations. Uh, the foundation is extremely important because you can tune your your uh, uh, bending modes of the pump system with the foundations. It's like an um, an uh, instrument, like a guitar. So depending on how stiff your your uh, uh, base plate or is uh, so then you can get uh, you can set your bending modes very very much where you want to have them. But you cannot set your torsional modes. That's very important to know. The torsional modes you cannot tune with the base plate. That's why you need to have uh, a, a torsional calculation. Pump unit. Um, regarding uh, reciprocating pumps, which will otherwise gives this high uh, pressure pulsations, uh, the plants doesn't have any controlled way of uh, setting requirements to avoid them. Um, more or less, uh, of course, they have uh, regulations. On, uh, on their pipe system, but it's like a uh, oh, uh, surprise uh, when you get uh, the, uh, the pump in the pipe system, how exactly the, the pipe system's resonance uh, interacts with the pump system. Uh, so this is uh, also complicated to set requirements. Of the, the pipe system to so avoid uh, pressure pulsations. Otherwise, as you know, you you you, uh, you can limit the pressure pulsations, pulsations with a correct piping system with different damping methods or uh, an, uh, a pipe resonance which are not tuned to the pressure pulsation frequencies. But it's also complicated because, as, as you know, there are uh, a lot of harmonics. Pressure uh, Then, also, a very important thing I would like to highlight is that uh, open wise, and this is not just for the nuclear power plant, it's all over in all industries. The pump supplier, they don't want to, to dig into what kind of pipe system you have. So they don't think that. Uh, with uh, into consideration uh, when they give you a pump. <clears throat> they come with a performance uh, pump curve, and which doesn't say anything about uh, how the pump will respond in, when it's connected to the pipe system. Uh, so this is also a, a finding, uh, and I think you find it very difficult to also set requirements on this. And uh, 
from my portion, I think uh, uh, this is should maybe be raised other departments also so that the operation specialist can uh, communicate with other disciplines to make this uh, as better. So now we have. Um, also, uh, since I am working with a lot of other process, oil industry, etc., uh, I know that a lot of these things uh, uh, are available in this standard API 610 or ISO 13709 uh, for centrifugal pumps or petroleum, petrochemical, uh, natural gas industries. But since it's not for, uh, dedicated for nuclear power, this is not uh, natural, of course, to use this. Uh, but this standard incorporates a lot of different things. Uh, and they, uh, you, you don't learn it by day, so to speak. <laughs> you need to grab the, the good things out of it. I'll, I'll refer to that standard when you go to that requirements. Um, also, uh, you, you have told me, but it doesn't need to be true because it can be due to history. Um, that uh, no one on the nuclear power plants has requirements for transient torsional vibration. And what is transient torsional vibrations? Yeah, that's when we, for example, when you get the short shortcuts, duty and daily shortcuts, if you have a lot of inertia on your pump. Uh, you have a lot of rotating inertia, and when you get an, an, uh, a stop uh, from, from a shortcut, uh, you will have a lot of forces on the pump system that can almost ruin it. And it's extremely important to have this if you have a big pump with a lot of inertia, like you have a flywheel attached to it. Uh, uh, and uh, I think uh, you maybe have had that when you designed uh, the, the, the RCPs, for instance, that started at the supplier, maybe did it and you didn't have got the information. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. What do you mean by shortcut? A 2D and 3D shortcut, electrical shortcut. Okay. Uh, also, that uh, requirement for that you can find in this API. <clears throat> but there are, this is not just, uh, note that I've written here, this is just examples. So, read more in the report if you want to know more about it. Okay, now we come to pump problems. So now I have, we have uh, some slides here and we've uh, one single example, so to speak. First, a little bit of, about theory for what we said, vertical horizontal pump, uh, vertical centrifugal pump, uh, horizontal centrifugal pump, and reciprocating pumps. So we start here with vertical centrifugal pumps. And here we have just an example, a cooling pump. Uh, and uh, it's vertical, first of all, which means that all the bearings on this shaft uh, have their loading, loadings of the radial forces are not affected by the gravity, uh, which means uh, that it's kind of unstable <laughs> when, when it's not... Uh, when, 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 when the gravity is not acting on this. Uh, it's tall, uh, long, slender, which means that it has a low resonance frequency. We also have a uh, long, uh, long distance in between the bearings, uh, which means very sensitive to radial offset. Uh, some of you Claim that it is not sensitive, uh, not very, but it's sensitive. Say it in that way. It's it, it, uh, definitely more sensitive compared to a horizontal uh, system. So, 
So the radial forces are controlled by lightly loaded bearings. So the, it's more or less can be, doesn't need to be, but it can be uh, unstable radial loadings of the bearings. Uh, also, what, uh, what is the difference between a pump and uh, a motor, so to speak? Now, a pump has often always water, and uh, uh, it has water, it has, needs to have ceilings. And the ceilings also contribute to stiffnesses. Uh, so, when, when you shall understand how the resonance is of this pump, you must count for the bearings, you must count for, for the different uh, ceilings as well, and the supporting structure, of course, which keeps it. Uh, and as you see, as on, on such a piece here, it's, uh, you cannot uh, put the sensor so very easily on this. Uh, you, you have no, not, no, not so much contact with different shafts. You otherwise you can you can set sensors on on the top of it, etc. And what you are allowed to do, so to speak. Uh, so you guess you, you get just the a glimpse of what of the vibration pattern really is inside this structure. Uh, so that's also uh, then beneficial that you, when you uh, analysis the vibration problem for a vertical pump, you should always have, uh, according to our experience at Ekteklam, that you should always have a real dynamic calculation with you. Uh, so you can tune that model with with what, what, what actually uh, is going on here on the shaft. Uh, of course, this is expensive, uh, but it's an expensive pump as well, and it's a very critical pump. Uh, since it's centrifugal here also, uh, what, why do we get vibrations for, from a pump? Anyways, yes, uh, you have, <coughs> when, when your pump is not tuned to your, the operating system it's working with, you get a lot of radial forces. It uh, depends on the shaft deflections here. So if you're not operating your pump at an optimum uh, point here, where you keep your radial forces shaft deflection as low as possible, then you will have increased uh, your vibration. So that's why it's so important that you, when dealing with pumps and vibration, you must look into your hydraulics uh, situation. Yeah. Here is one example that we got on the vertical centrifugal pump. Uh, so that was an RCP cooling pump, which had a flywheel here. Uh, and uh, the plant here, they thought that the, the, uh, the gravity, the center of gravity had changed due to that uh, they had worn keys. So we, the change, so to speak, uh, the centralization of the, of the shaft. Which means that uh, the loadings on the uh, journal bearings also change the, their stiffness, change the stiffness of everything. You change your your uh, critical speed, the resonance to sum it up with. And uh, since it has a flywheel here also, uh, when you do the uh, speed downs or coast downs, uh, uh, you will be maybe stay a long time when when you have go through this uh, resonance, which makes that it will more wear and tear. Uh, so 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 this can also then be this explain what is physics uh, behind it that uh, you have uh, an this 
centralization of the shock when you change uh, the center of gravity. Okay, we need these vertical pumps. Now we come to horizontal centrifugal pumps. Um, uh, I think this picture is quite nice. You have uh, here on this shot, you have the flow. <coughs> and here you have the pressure, the head. When you speak on pumps, you're talking about head. Uh, this curve here is uh, the pump curve that you get from uh, your supplier. And they give you some indication where your optimum best efficient point should be. But that, as I want to highlight, it's not tuned to your system, your pipe system. But ideally it looks like this, okay? You have this pump, it is exactly as it was tested at the supplier's factory. And it says here is our best efficient point. Then uh, the pumps driving forces are in equilibrium to the uh, uh, resistive uh, uh, breaking forces, so to speak. You need to have like a tune point from the system, water system, and, and the pump, and it's here. Okay, this, which means that now we have this uh, optimum uh, design points with the shaft, which uh, are very centralized, minor offsets, etc. Low vibrations here. Uh, but what happens when we change the flow? We want to uh, run here, a minor flow. Yeah, now we are a little bit far away from the, the best efficient point here. Huh? So a lot of uh, recirculation problems can appear. It can be suction recirculation, uh, discharge recirculation, and you get vapor into coming into the system. Uh, otherwise, this is the vapor coming here where you get cavitation. Sometimes cavitation here as well. Uh, but uh, the output is that you should, if you run, if you think, if you get from your supplier that the best efficient point is here, but your system is saying here, then you can understand why your pump is breaking. Uh, so this is extremely important that you verify that uh, when you buy the new pump. Uh, and here is an example on of the pump, the connecting pump system, uh, which causes the breaking force forces to the pump. Uh, that's the pressure. So we need this pressure in order to get this flow from the pump. And um, the green one is the pump curve, and the red one is the, the present system curve. When the pump and the, uh, uh, when, the, um, when you change your pipe system, you get a new value, you, um, for, you design a new, uh, new pipeline, etc., or you change some elevation, etc., then this system curve is changing all the time. So you, the best efficient point can move along the pump curve, depending on what kind of modification you perform. That's why it's so important that you have the system curve should always be updated to what is acting out there together with the suppliers. Pump curve. This pump curve may may also be updated because the pump wears, so the pump curve will go down here. And uh, what's what's uh, also uh, affecting of the horizontal centrifugal pump is the foundation foundation and the connecting pipe system. 
And there is a pitfall which I broke up from my former uh, um, any, any feedback uh, product vibration measurement pitfalls, which has to do with pumps to do. Often, why if you think about foundation, that is the wash, tuning your machine. But what happens if your connecting pipe system is stiffer than your foundation? It's like you have an upside down foundation. Uh, so you, you need, to, for an horizontal centrifugal pump, you need to, to tune the stiffnesses of the connecting pump system and the foundation in order to get a correct stiffness for the pump. You cannot, you cannot just think foundation. Now it's an example here from a uh, non-nuclear power plant. Uh, it's an ordinary centrifugal pump here. Uh, you have annular seas between the discharge and suction side here, with they call them wear ring. Here you see a little picture of the pump. The wear rings are here. Wearing. Uh, we came to this site. Uh, it sounded terrible. Actually, terrible. Uh, you could not think it was cavitation. No, it was like more broadband noise, but extremely high. And this is what you see here in the spectrogram here. You see, it's a lot of excitation here between 500 and 1000. It has five impellers in this pump. You see here, here you have uh, the, the Wayne passage frequency here at 250. Uh, and then you count multiples of the Wayne passage according also with uh, turbulence phenomenon higher up here. And then it can look like this. Uh, this is was uh, wearing a total corrosion around here. Um, the pump is working, but uh, not sufficiently. And 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 uh, this has to do that the the uh, the rotor inside here. It's uh, had been worked worked in, an, uh, in a, a non-matched pump curve, system curve uh, configuration, so it had worked. It has not worked in this position. It has been driving here all the time without verification. So uh, it's here and we and here and we but uh, the water is pumping, so no one, and no one goes almost down here and look at the pump. So then it, it looks like that. Uh, so so uh, the, uh, as a cause, the, it's kind of uh, radial offset, which makes uh, the turbulence around uh, the ceiling here, which causes recirculation. Uh, so what we we did here was that we, of course, uh, replaced uh, this uh, wearing and and was and uh, did the performance test of the pump. What, where where should this operate? And it had uh, been due to that there were a lot of different uh, types system modification. From the start, but they didn't have taken into account. So they might just listen to the pump uh, supplier, and the pump supplier di didn't ask about if they had modified their pump, the connecting pipe system. Uh, then we have reciprocating pumps. Uh, there are, this is also just one single example, there are a lot of problems reciprocating pumps. But 
you want, want to highlight anyways the dynamic pressure pulsations from this? Otherwise, these pulses they interact with the connecting uh, pipe systems uh, and uh, can induce forces on the pipe system itself. Uh, but also, they can can cause that it can lead to uh, at the safe release valves are opened by mistakes of traffic. Uh, and the valves can also be be, uh, uh, be teared and broken. Um, we can also get uh, some kind of cavitation from this, since you uh, you put like more pressure inside these uh, cavities which are in the total pump system, which cause bubbles. And uh, if you're unlucky, it ends up with cavitation. So uh, it, it, it's, uh, can be uh, very messy. You cannot watch out and tune it. Here is uh, an example here that you see a valve here. And the value C here had an an uh, damaged area here, so it was broken. And uh, by uh, investigate this problem, you see the before the mitigation, which I was going to talk about. You had like ten bars to the PK, the red one. But then they, what they did was that they uh, redesigned the connecting. Pipe systems interfere with the resonances, so that you don't get this amplification of 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 the of, the, of the excitation. Then it went down to uh, five bar instead. And uh, so, so when you have reciprocating pump. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, important that you perform vibration measurements like ODS mode and testing, so you really make sure that your uh, your uh, piston pumps excitation tunes not interfere with the pipe system. Okay, and now we come back to how here how we can verify. What's happening over time? And I think this is kind of important when you have had a lot of pumps for a longer time. But you always keep updating your pump curves and system curves. Uh, here, here, here you have uh, like the pump. What what happens with the pump curve uh, if you don't uh, work through acting and serving it as it should? Yeah, the pump curve goes down. So when it was new, it was like here. And now something is uh, is wrong inside the pump. Can be a seeding, whatever. Now it's down here. Uh, so it's it can be new, large, or faster in this point. And here it's worn, smaller, or lower, smaller impeller. So I would say large impeller, small impeller. So this is something which is always adjustment up and down. And you need to uh, make sure that your pump is in a good condition. So you can rely on your pump curve. And you haven't done any other modifications. The same refers, of course, to the pipe connecting pipe system, which gives you the system curve. This can, this can also change. I will have a slide after here. And if, why we're doing this is that we we want to work, to run our pump in this best efficient point where we have the radial forces at the minimum. Then everything is perfectly well. Here is an example of a system curve. Here you have two, two different curves. 
one when it was new and uh, in good condition or we haven't made any changes. Uh, but then we added more friction resistance into the pipe system. Like we can maybe change another valve or we do another bend in the system, etc. Okay, then this is moving in this direction. So it causes more resistance to the system. Which means when you put on your pump per hard, you, you get a different intersection point. Uh, I knew that you knew most of you knew all the the basic about how do vibration measurements uh, and uh, balancing and, and uh, 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 all your usual stuff. I don't uh, highlight that so much, but of course this is very uh, important that you still do these kinds of measurements to to verify. Uh, I just want to highlight what I think you should work for. Uh, to move on to get to a better system. Uh, I always want to highlight uh, the motor measurements. When you're doing your your investigation on your, your problem, uh, you get a lot of information from, from the motor currents. And here they are available, these uh, loops wires which measure the current as function of as time and and uh, if you think yourself i mean if you have a good working pump but uh, a terrible uh, motor driver it's not so good <coughs> so make sure that the current is okay it works fine and you, you know that okay it's on the pump side <laughs> or if not it's on the motor that's a good, good, good lesson to learn. And you do all these measurements uh, in parallel with your vibrations. Now we come to uh, move on to uh, more mitigation actions. And this is also this is an uh, an, uh, an uh, vertical. Uh, cooling pump, MC pump, uh, and there the plant has uh, identified that the critical speed uh, often was changes each time, almost when they start up the pump. And uh, uh, from our knowledge of physics now, it should not be so surprising because you know that the, the, the bearings are very sensitive for radial offset. So it's very easy to, to change the resonance. But their, their mitigation action here is that they, they have a very nice mitigation action here with stiffening bar, which are tensioned with spring that they can sort of be fine tuned to the more idle way and uh, uh, correct how the resonance move back and forth. Um, otherwise, when you get the pump problem, many, many people, they think of the pump, uh, but often it uh, can be the motor or another auxiliary, uh, auxiliary component. Uh, a very well known uh, way of uh, if it's a resonance problem can be that you add on a weight package, tune it with a certain number of uh, steel plates on top of it to move from the resonance. In this case, uh, the blue curve had almost exactly. Uh, uh, a resonance at the uh, one times RPM. That was not good. Uh, and uh, also, this did not have a resonance at the factory, of course, because now it's on on a on a foundation 
which the, the supplier hasn't uh, considered. So we get the resonance prob problem when we take it into the plant and do the, the side test. And also here, it's, you, 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 it's like a lesson, you see what you get, so to speak. You see here that by, by adding different masses, you, you can change uh, the mode away from the one times RPM range. Uh, but you should also be aware of that you need to know which, what, which kind of direction this uh, resonance has. Like you see here, here you have a resonance uh, like 115 hertz. That doesn't happen so much when you change the weight. Uh, and this is a more, uh, if I remember, recall right now, it's more a, a vertical mode. Typically, when you have a, con uh, a, a, a steel skid with, with concrete, you get a very good stiffness in the vertical direction. But the stiffness in the horizontal direction is so more less uncontrolled. Uh, so this is the horizontal resonance we see here. Two peaks. But that's possible um, to, to, to uh, temporarily uh, get rid of a problem before you fix your uh, foundation. Uh, when it comes to uh, reciprocating pumps or mitigation action there, uh, we want to highlight when you install your system, you should always do an ODS of uh, your connecting pipe system, so you understand uh, uh, what is uh, the excite, what, what, what uh, vibration will get excited in that installed pipe system. And the operational deflection shape measures both the structure uh, excitation and the fluid acoustic excitation from the fluid. That's very good to know, no problem. But also you could do a uh, modal impact or some other excitation to the modal analysis of a pipe system. Then you disregard the effect of the fluid you can see that. And this is always complicated. You get some uh, big ex uh, excitation in the pipe system, which you cannot see when you do the model analysis. Then I want to uh, highlight that you should contact your CFD uh, competence. Uh, I have used that personally myself a lot of times to how you can distinguish an acoustic mode versus a um, structured mode of a pipe system. They can do a, a very simple uh, water hammer analysis of a pipe system. And that the water hammer is like a, a transit, as you know. And they will come with results like this and tell you where the acoustic resonance are located and then you can compare them with your ODS because it doesn't work it doesn't work to, to just add on an, uh, an enforcement for the pipe system a different hanger if it's an acoustical mode uh, then you need to think about something else maybe change the bends or an elevation etc so then you can design and improve your pipe support to uh, hopefully get a better pipe system which not to uh, interact with the resonance. So, uh, then it comes to the conclusion here, uh, results and uh, observation. So, pump problems, they, they come both from the structural part Otherwise, it's the foundation and the piping. Uh, they also comes from the router itself. And on a vertical machine, they are very more hidden. You cannot have so much access to the router and you cannot have access to 
uh, on ideal multi stage horizontal pump anyway, so you, there you also need to have a rotor dynamic calculation because they they contribute to the stiffnesses. The bearing and the ceilings add stiffnesses or remove stiffnesses to the actual uh, pump system. And uh, this is also can be complicated to, to calculate for the ceilings when you're talking about rotor dynamic calculation. You often distinguish whether you have calculated it for a dry pump or a wet pump. And there are all different models how to deal with ceilings and bearings to calculate the stiffness. And then uh, you have this hydraulic condition. You must know which flow and head is acting in your pump system. And this needs to be uh, tuned. The pipe system needs to be tuned to your pump system. But otherwise, the pump problem influences each other here. So otherwise, it's a combination. So to find the root cause can be sometimes possible, uh, yeah, sometimes very complicated. So the focus must be on the entire system. And that's very complicated, so then put it uh, uh, in a more structured way to see, okay, what can it be? What kind of physics do we have here for the pump? Oh, is it a vertical or is it, uh, is it a vertical? Okay, think about the, the rotor shaft, uh, the, the radial offset this. What can be the problem here? Some ceilings, some clearances are not working okay. Uh, is it an, uh, an horizontal centrifugal pump? Okay, think in first place, is it a bending way? Okay, a bending resonance. Then think uh, foundation and pump connecting pipe system, etc. Um, so that's why right here, vertical centrifugal pumps preferable are investigated by both through the dynamic calculations and very, very, uh, verification testing, where access to the pump allows. And this is due to that the, the radial direction of the vertical machine are lightly loaded due to the gravity force, in, where it's no gravity force in the radial direction. For the horizontal, it's the our way around. There you have the gravity force in the radial direction. That's why the foundation and pipe system uh, 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 contribute more to the vibration. Uh, also, we had we got the question that we could. Uh, have some suggestions suggestions for updating some of the standards, etc. Uh, and we we think that this ISO T ten eight one six seven is a, a recommendation to to dig more into and see um, how it can be updated. Um, there are different and discrepancy uh, which are missing there. You can read more about that in, in the report. Uh, but I think we are now more or less running out of time to have some other questions as well. Uh, so I think we conclude here. Um, so, yeah. And then April. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, uh, for your uh, attention and uh, please welcome uh, questions. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Forsyth, uh, could you go back one slide so we can read it through again? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> no commercial <my> eyes. <laughs> Yes, I mean.
Yes, uh, they, they, there are new norms. Uh, I think uh, the question we are thinking about ISO uh, 20816, which, which are under review. <laughs> But the 20.816 is, from what I know, only available uh, with the method the point 0.1. I think maybe you know that more. I don't think we have uh, 20.816 available for uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Vertical pumps are always very sensitive uh, due to the low bearing forces, and this may lead to instability. I think you showed an example yes. where you can avoid this by bringing into the system additional forces. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. bearings are Yeah, you know that very well. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. 